Anyway, Dr. Nancy Wexler is a hugger. So on the day when a cure for Huntington's disease is found... Have you thought about how you would celebrate? Well, me being me, I'd probably like run and scream and shout and probably jump on anybody like you. Like I'll show you. That's how I'd celebrate. Really? Yeah. I hope I'm yeah. around. Geneticist Nancy Wexler's efforts to end Huntington's disease have included almost annual trips to a small remote Venezuelan village where Huntington's is common and plenty of painful family history. When her mother was diagnosed with the fatal disease in 1968, Wexler's father, Dr. Milton Wexler, formed the Hereditary Disease Foundation. In all, Huntington's killed Wexler's maternal grandfather, her mother, and her mother's three brothers. I can inherit from my dad um, his optimism and his DNA. I can inherit from my mom a 50-50 chance of dying of Huntington's. So what do you think, <laughs> which option do you think I'm kind of rooting for? Yeah. So my sister and I each have like a one in two chance of inheriting her lethal disease. Huntington's is perhaps best known as the disease that killed the iconic folk singer Woody Guthrie. The genetic disorder slowly destroys an area of the brain regulating movement and cognition, causing a long and painful physical and mental deterioration. Diagnosis is a death sentence. There is a simple blood test that can determine if you are at risk, but the woman whose work resulted in that test for Huntington's has opted not to take it. We were going to take the test. No, you know, why not, right? We, we were the family that invented it, so how could we not take it? And then I started getting nightmares, my sister started getting nightmares, my dad started getting nightmares, because, you know, living with ambiguity is not that bad. As president of the Hereditary Disease Foundation, Wexler reads grant reports, talks to scientists and affected families, and fundraises for research, some of which is conducted at the New York Genome Center in Lower Manhattan. Most of my friends sort of feel the clock ticking, so if I can get up in the morning and even a little tiny bit make a difference in their lives, or my life, or my family's life, then that motivates me. After graduating from Radcliffe, Wexler earned a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Michigan in 1974. There was never much doubt that she would commit her life to working on a cure for Huntington's. It brought her to a place far from the California of her youth and her New York home, a remote part of Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, where many families are suffering from the disease. Wexler's research teams have visited there since 1979. The people of Venezuela, um, I've never met anybody like them, really, because they're so graceful and so beautiful, uh, beautiful of heart and soul, and they just keep you motivated. Mom, who had 14 kids, uh, 10 of the kids died of Huntington's, and they're participants, and I said to her, why do you do this? She said, well, Nancy, uh, I think you're going to bring us the cure, and I do it for my kids. He had nine brothers and sisters, and seven out of the nine got Huntington's and died. In Venezuela, she's known as Angel Catire, the blonde angel. She says she never has any trouble pulling herself away from the comforts of New York for the poverty and pain of Lake Maracaibo. It's harder to come back from there than to leave to go there, because you know that the people you're saying goodbye to are not going to be alive. The research in Venezuela has included more than 18,000 individuals and more than 4,000 blood samples. In 1983, a marker or general location for the gene causing Huntington's was found. Ten years later, researchers found the specific gene. That resulted in a simple blood test that can determine if you have Huntington's or not. But Wexler advises others not to take the test. They think they're going to find out they don't have it, but, you know, 50-50. Right. Many of them have committed suicide. Uh, their, if their job finds out that they're, you know, definitely going to get Huntington, they very often are fired. Wexler's trips to Venezuela have been well documented over the decades, from the 1980s into the 2000s. There are almost a thousand people down here who are carrying this time bomb. And we see her today. She says she ponders her own health every day and gives herself tasks to determine if she might be developing the disease. I used to uh, walk on, you know, on a sidewalk, walk on a straight line, 
if I could do that. I think, oh, now I got Huntington's. And do you see changes, or has it stayed the same? Well, I'm not sure a person can actually notice those things about yourself. Nancy Wexler grew up in Los Angeles. Her father was a prominent psychoanalyst whose mantra was, boredom is against your religion. There were trips to art museums and plenty of music at home. He was playing Sun Ra and, you know, he's just very, very avant-garde person. Your dad played Sun Ra, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. The thinking in 1968 was that women couldn't get Huntington's disease, but something was wrong with Wexler's mother. Her gait was getting terrible. You know, she was walking across the street and a policeman screamed at her, you know, aren't you ashamed of yourself for being drunk so early in the morning? What's the matter with you? And, you know, she came, she saw my dad that night, and she was diagnosed with Huntington. Wexler's sister Alice chronicled the family's travails in Mapping Fate, a memoir of family, risk, and genetic research. As we all know, Huntington's disease can wreak havoc on families and their friends. But in our case, it strengthened the bond between Nancy and me. Wexler's partner is Dr. Herbert Partis, the former president and CEO of New York Presbyterian Hospital. Wexler is 70. She does not have children, a reality affected by Huntington's. I did, I did decide until there was a test, I would not have kids because I didn't think, you know, I, I didn't think it was fair to inflict it on them, you know, because if I wasn't around to take care of them, then they got sick. Wexler says once the test was established, she tried to have kids to no avail. She found her surrogate family in a small village in Venezuela. For them and for all of her family members killed by Huntington's, she carries on. If I find that I'm fine, that's great. I'm still going to devote myself to curing Huntington's. If I find that I'm not fine, I'm still going to care, develop my life, you know, develop my life to doing that.